Jacinda Ardern will stand down as Prime Minister of New Zealand after admitting that she doesn't have enough left in the tank to continue in the top job. Joining us live now, politics lecturer at the Victoria University of Wellington, Bryce Edwards. Bryce, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So morning. Did, did she jump before she was pushed? I think that's probably the more negative way of looking at it. But, yeah, essentially that's the case. Uh, we have an election in October this year. The polls have just been plummeting for this Labour government and, indeed, for Ardern herself. So, um, you know, of course, she won re-election in 2020 with 50% of the vote, which is incredibly high for a proportional representation system. But um, recent polls have had her about 32%. And so they've lost about a third of their support, um, and it was going to be a very hard re-election battle. I think Ardern has seen which way the wind's blowing and got out before she gets turfed out. Well, OK, yeah, that, that was the exact point I was making. So she, she, it looked likely that she was going to get pushed out by the electorate. Indeed. And so, um, and it's not just those on the political right that are causing her trouble, um, criticising her. She's losing a lot of support of those on the left, her own right. Labour supporters, who kind of feel a bit disillusioned that she hasn't really delivered. She mm. was very good dealing with crises, uh, particularly the, the Christchurch terrorist uh, mosque attack and then COVID, but not so good with dealing with the economy, uh, lots of crises in terms of cost of living, housing and affordability, inequality, uh, problems in health and education. There was a feeling that the government really haven't had that under control. Um, they've been more focused on maybe some more cultural issues, um, the pet projects, instead of dealing with the things that really affect people's daily lives. Yeah, and, and, and to get into some of that, because I was reading this morning too, Bryce, that uh, she'd made a, a, a policy pitch when when she was re-elected last time to, to build somewhat 100,000 homes, but in the end delivered just a small fraction of that. That's part of the, the story of policy failures, isn't it? Yeah, there's been endless uh, unmet promises. So, um, yes, <clears throat> they came to office, you know, railing against inequality, poverty, a housing crisis, but then things have actually got worse. Under, yeah. um, in, in most ways under this government. So um, their own supporters became quite disillusioned. Uh, it's meant that the National Party, which is the, the main centre-right party, have been able to unify over the last year and they've surged ahead in the polls. And so it was before um, Ardern's resignation yesterday, it was looking like there'd be a change of government this year. Anyhow, now it looks even more almost certain. So what's her legacy in the end? I mean, she, 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 she's generated headlines around the world. She was seen by, by some as an icon of the left and small L liberals. You know, when you balance those policy failures with, with some of her successes, you, you rightly point out her leadership during Christchurch massacre, uh, as well as the White Island tragedy, it should be said. So, so how do you balance it all out? How will she be remembered? Yes, it will be a divided legacy. And, um, I mean, her supporters are always going to, uh, yeah, celebrate that she put New Zealand on the world map with all of these things. And you can see these images that you're showing of how um, well she um, came across. And, you know, she had um, a baby while in office, mm. which, again, was a kind of historic um, thing that New Zealand is quite proud of. And um, I think she was seen to do politics in a different way. She represented some sort of generational change. Um, so, and New Zealand's never Never had a prime minister like this on the world stage. Our mm. prime ministers don't tend to get a lot of coverage, but certainly, uh, yeah, she was quite well known internationally. And I think internationally, there's been a lot more shock actually about her departure because uh, often, you know, global audiences don't see those declines, those you know, polls dropping. They only see the more glamorous, you know, sort of uh, things, you know, like her visiting the White House and so forth. Yeah. But the domestic problems were just too big. All right, Bryce. I uh, really appreciate uh, some of your analysis there. Appreciate that. Thank you.